So Kate, you're a research uh, scientist at MIT in robotics. Uh, first of all, what's your background? What do you need to study robotics? I actually didn't study robotics, I studied law. Okay. And I have a background in social sciences. But I started working at MIT as a legal specialist and then got roped into robots as well, so. Okay. Is there, is there, can you study robotics? Or can you study anthropomorphology? Mm, it's difficult because it's very interdisciplinary. So the type of human-robot interaction that I study has a lot to do with psychology in humans yeah. and less to do with building robots. So it's more when people get together who have both disciplines that amazing research in that area happens. Okay, so, so your lab basically is, is, is all kinds of stuff, it's all kinds of people uh, together uh, working there. It does. With I different mean, backgrounds. Yes. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, so um, well, you, you talked about uh, all aspects, all kinds of aspects of, of, of robots in the new future and the, and the far future basically. So, so first of all, what's your vision, let's say, on, on, uh, on robotics. I mean, um, r right now you're talking about uh, the fact that there is an animal welfare organization uh, getting complaints about us uh, kicking spot, right? Um, for now, those feelings may be, um, let's say, not, not, not real. So uh, we know it's a robot, but uh, at, at, to, what, to what level will robots remain robots? And, and actually grow, grow feelings and become more human. And then maybe the complaint with the you know, robotics uh, welfare uh, organization may be, may be real. Maybe real. That's a good question. It's, it's a little bit science fiction-y in that I think just working with roboticists, I think that we're a long ways away from developing robots or AI that approach anything of the level that where we would actually need to give them any rights. But I do think that people's projection onto robots happens much sooner than that and mm -hmm. that at some point it might actually not matter what the robot can actually do or actually feels, but people are projecting onto them so much and have a relationship with robots so much that that would warrant some kind of you know, legitimate complaint to the animal cruelty uh -huh. agency. Okay, because it says more about the person of that is actually, for example, kicking the robot than exactly. the robot, right? Might be seen as offensive, that yeah. person. Yeah, because okay. if, you're, if you're willing to be violent towards something that reacts in a very lifelike way, that might mean that you know, you're shutting off some of your natural empathy. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, in, the, in, the, in the near future, what, what field of play, what, what, what work do you see for robots uh, happening? I mean, you already mentioned uh, therapy, for example, right? Uh, what other aspects will be uh, robotized, let's say? I think most aspects of our lives will be robotized in one way or another. And some of it will be social robots that engage with us socially. But generally, I mean, your, your home is already getting roboticized. Your car is already a robot, probably. So it's, it's all areas of our lives. Is that a threat also uh, for jobs, for example? You know, I'm not as worried about jobs as other people because I think that given how technology is developing right now, it, it's more to robots that need to work together with humans and make things a little bit easier that are going to you know, start entering the workplace. And I think that there will be a development towards robots taking jobs, but it's going to be much more gradual than, than people okay. think. Will be. Will they be creating jobs as well? Will there be new jobs? I think, I think the whole jobs problem, it's going to happen so slowly that it's really hard to tell what type of society we'll be living in by the time that you know, robots have taken all the jobs. It could be that there's a whole new industry that's been created. For, for instance, the service industry didn't used to exist and now it's huge. So it could be that we managed to create something new or that the robots managed to create more jobs. We just don't know. Okay, okay. What's the most interesting uh, business case or, or, or human case you've seen uh, while interacting with a, with a robot? Can you tell us a story about, uh, well, people interacting with them? I, I, so, I've done a few um, workshops or, you know, tests with people where I give them these cute robots and then ask them to torture and kill them and it's, 
it, people's reactions are very polarized. And so I think it's always interesting to see someone react to that because some people react to, oh, I don't want to be a violent person. Some uh -huh. people actually empathize with the robot and some people have no problem just cutting its head off. Okay. So I think that's super interesting. It is actually. Okay. Um, in terms of privacy, you already mentioned it in your, in your speech. Uh, of course, there is a general discussion about uh, privacy and giving away certain data uh, with, with the gain of getting better services or, or personal, more personal services. Uh, is, is privacy a threat you can see on the, on the short term? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's really hard to not get cynical and say privacy is dead because I mean, what's happening now with, with internet services, but also with robotics will happen as well, is that people are incentivized to give up personal information because it makes the services work better. Um, so it's really hard to protect people's privacy when you have these market forces. Okay, so a robot won't, won't close her or his eyes when we're doing something <laughs> that may be something between four eyes. I mean, it's not in the incentive of the company making the robot to not collect that data. Okay, and could there be uh, some kind of, uh, let's say, social structures built inside of a robot? I mean, uh, we are, let's say, we know that uh, uh, some for, in some situation we should uh, walk away or close our eyes or, or uh, whatever. Um, could that be built in, that, that set of protocols and guidelines? we are getting educated to, basically? It, it certainly could. It's a little bit difficult to program ethical rules into uh -huh. robots. It's very hard because our human ethics are so messy and our, we don't really, our morals are so <laughs> gray. Um, but yeah, certainly, you know, there are ways to program robots so that they will protect people's privacy or so that they will be more sensitive in, in a very human-like way. Um, the question is whether companies have an incentive to do that or not. Mm -hmm. So You're talking about demand. companies, but could, could there also be, uh, I mean, governments using them or... or oh, yes. Uh, because we're, also, we're always assuming that companies are doing something bad, right? Uh, yeah, but it, governments are a big problem as well. It's, okay. Of course, the whole surveillance issue mm -hmm. is a big deal in the United States right now, mm -hmm. um, abroad as well. There's a great movie called Robot and Frank that everyone should see because it touches on all of these issues. Okay, I haven't seen it. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a look at it. Um, in terms of uh, legislation, uh, for example, with uh, the connected car and the, and the autonomous car, uh, we've seen that in, in certain states in the US and, and also in Europe, uh, governments are changing legislation to, uh, to facilitate the development of those kind of uh, products. Uh, in, 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 in robotics, I mean, is there already legislation uh, being made about, uh, let's say, what robots can do and, and can't do, what, what kind of interactions are uh, legal and, and what are illegal? In certain areas, yeah. Didn't Belgium just pass some legislation for autonomous vehicles? Um, that I could believe. be. I'm not from Belgium. So oh, you're not. I'm Dutch. But that could be. I can't tell the difference between the Flemish and <laughs> yeah, the Dutch. No, it's, it's, I know, I'm sorry. I'm it's sure almost the same. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what the Dutch have done, but there are certain areas where people are very focused right now for, and also for legislation. So drones, for example, is a huge topic. People are very concerned about drones, and so you know, legislators are dealing with it. I think there are other areas where there's just not enough attention yet. Um, where we should also be thinking about legislation, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay, and, and who would be responsible? I mean, in, in your point of view, what, yeah, who's responsible? The, 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 the company producing the robot? The guy using their robot? I, that's a really good question. No and ideas. I would like to just say the free market will regulate it, but I don't think that's always true. I think that if consumers are aware of issues and they demand, then it, it creates incentives for companies to do something. And if they don't, then maybe government regulation is warranted. Okay. In, um, fi final question. In, in, in 20 years, how will society uh, look like? Will it be uh, a society like iRobot, uh, <laughs> the iRobot movie? Or, or where do you see robots fit in? 
and how will our interaction uh, be with them? I mean, so for the past few decades, we we keep saying in 20 years we're going to mm -hmm. have robots who are just like us. In 20 years, in 20 years. Yeah. So I'm a little bit skeptical that in 20 years we're going to be living in the iRobot world. Robots are still very, very stupid and okay. can only do very specific things. But I do think that there's going to be a gradual, very gradual um, move towards robotics just kind of everywhere, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes. And we're going to become more roboticized sometimes without even noticing. Okay. I, I told you a final question, but I have a, a, a last mm -hmm. final question. Will people become more robotic? I mean, we, we just had, I just had an interview with, with Rowit, and he was talking about, uh, let's say, plugging in memory into our brain. Could that happen as well, the other way around? I think that that will probably happen sooner than we have robots that are, that are just like us and have feelings. I think it's, what's going to happen first is that we're going to get into cyborgs and human enhancement. And I think that's going to shape also the way that we think about robots in the future. Okay. Well, very interesting topic. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. Must be must be awesome career to, to work on that. It's so so much fun. Yeah, can imagine. Well, thanks a lot for being here. Thank you. Yeah.